Now this bird is 35 years old. 35 years old. And he's still going strong. Look at him fly. He makes it look so easy. He's just coasting along. And he'll come over the top of your heads. And he's going to land with Stefan up on the balcony. He's going to do a couple of flights, A to B, over the tops of your heads. So my advice to you is, if you hear a bell, get down, okay? Because with his old age, he does cut it a little bit fine. Bless him. Um, and he sometimes does come very low, just like that, <laughs> as you saw. This bird is a big scavenger. He's also very predatory. And they're mostly related to our golden eagle, most closely related to. And you can kind of see a lot of people uh, mis mistake them for golden eagles because of his plumage. Uh, and you can see it's kind of the same sort of coloration. But he can't take down anywhere near the size of prey that a golden eagle can. However, he will take down things like rodents, uh, hares as well. So he's a very good predator. But what's the point of working really hard for a meal when you can just have it put on a plate for you? So he'll use other birds as well to find food. But another thing he'll do is he'll sit on termite mounds, like the ones we've got dotted around the arena. And he'll sit on there for hours upon end, feeding on those small little termites. And you can imagine, you know, that's not really a good source of, of a meal, really. It's not very big. So he has to eat thousands at a time just to get a decent fill, uh, more than anything. And he literally will do that out in the wild. And it's a real natural shot if we can get him on that termite mound. It's absolutely lovely. It really is. Like I said, he'll follow other birds out there in the wild. And what are the top, top scavengers out there in Africa or out in the savannah? They are, of course, the vultures. And that's what we're going to introduce to you next of all. Because Frodo would be following where the vultures go. Because he's not stupid. Oh, look at this. We've been joined by a vulture at the top of the grounds. This, everyone, is Clay. Clay is an African white-back vulture. And he would be the first to a carcass before Frodo. A carcass like this buffalo that's clearly seen better days out there in the middle of the arena. Straight away, Clay would find it and then, like I say, attract the other birds down. So Frodo isn't stupid. He's clever enough to follow where the vultures go. Clay's going to be doing his stuff up at the top of the grounds using thermal activity, which is exactly what these birds will be doing in the wild. Using their huge broad wings to circle and glide. Because once they've got their wings set, they don't have to do any work at all. They're relaxed, they're calm, and they simply just rise higher and higher into the sky. In fact, these birds have been recorded at thousands of feet in the air. Just him fly now. Look at him set those wings. He's got about a six to seven foot wingspan and that's exactly what will take him up into the sky. And he's a fantastic flyer. He, the bird you're looking at right now, is a critically endangered bird. I can't stress it enough how important he is to the animal kingdom. The vulture consumes carcasses, it consumes rotting meat. He has special enzymes and acids in his stomach, which allows him to eradicate disease. Diseases such as botulism, typhoid, cholera, all these diseases that will be harmful to us, but also harmful to other animals as well, out there in the wild, out there in the whole ecosystem and ecology. So they're so critical to how the whole way of the wild works. They're the cleanup crew of the wild countryside. They do a job that no one else wants to do. And I can't issue enough how, how much they need our help. Because within the next 20 to 30 years, the birds you're looking at on the top of the hill now could be extinct from the wild. The only place you could see them is here in captivity in places like us. One of the main reasons out in Africa why they're struggling so much is poaching and poisoning that follows that. Not necessarily poaching for fun of the birds, but what a poacher will do is it will kill something like a rhino or an elephant for the tusk, for the horn, for the ivory. That's where they make their money. It's said now that ivory is worth more than gold alone. So there's a huge trade for it. And what happens is the vultures naturally come down to that carcass because they clear up the rotting meat. But then what they're doing is they're giving the game away for the poachers. Because the rangers are following where the vultures go because they know they'll lead them to a carcass. 
They can then investigate it, they can look for tire tracks, they can look for footprints. Anything that might lead them closer to the poachers themselves. So what the poachers are now doing is the poachers are now lacing the carcass with poison meat, but also covering the carcass in poison as well. So the first thing these vultures come to is that poison, and it kills them sometimes within minutes, even worse cases within seconds. And it's just lights out for them straight away. So what we're doing now is we set up these poison response kits. And these poison response kits are designed for us to get down to the carcass, the poison carcass first, before the vultures get there. So we can try and eradicate the problem and try and stop them from feeding on the poison. So we've got teams working out there conserving these birds out in Africa, um, trying our absolute hardest. Just by you guys coming in today um, and paying your admission fee, it, we've got to say a massive thank you to you. Because you've helped out hugely with the work we do out there, with most of the money we make going towards conservation efforts that we run. If you want to help further, on your exit gate, we'll be selling one size fits all vulture wristbands, alright? They're one pound each, um, and that, all that money we make again goes towards the vulture conservation efforts. And we also have a donation bucket as well for the poison response kits alone, if you want to help with that. Clay, he does a fantastic job every single day at flying the flag for the vultures, and I think he's done a sterling job again today, just as he always does. Uh, so what we do is we don't want to overcook the egg, as it were, um, especially on a day like today when it's warm. Um, we don't want to get overheated because that can quite easily happen. So Rear's headed off home, so all he's got to do is a hop, skip and a jump, back off for home. And that was our scavenger team, ladies and gentlemen, the vultures.